in uh, Applied Linguistics. And I'm happy to be here and happy to have you guys here with me. Let's see, State College today was kind of rainy and cloudy. So um, I'm happy to get some color into my day with this little painting. Um, I'll just hand up the, I'll hold up the, uh, the sketch here. Um, we're gonna do this little Penn State Halloween kitty. All right, and I'm sure some people will be kind of trickling in. So I'm gonna kind of slow down my introduction here. Um, as you can see, at least I can see on my, on my screen that this video is being um, recorded. Um, so if you know anybody who could not uh, zoom in tonight, this will be available later in the week. So anybody that uh, um, wasn't able to zoom in can, can view it um, on their own. And Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so if there, you any there, there's a chat. Oh, yeah. Can I just yeah, go to the chat? You, go ahead and put me on. How do we get back to mute? If you guys could just stay muted, that would, <laughs> yeah. So tr stay muted uh, throughout the evening. If you do have questions, please um, pop them in the chat. We have someone managing the chat there, so you should be able to post your questions. Um, gosh, I'm seeing 200 participants. Um, I'm seeing someone says that they're having audio trouble. Can everybody hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you if you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. So if you can't hear me, it's probably um, an issue with on your end. All right. Um, let's see. Did I do all my introductions? Um, I, my name is Jackie. I, I probably said that. So um, yeah, this is our our little painting for this evening. Um, I know that you might have all sorts of different materials um, where you are. Um, this is what I'm working with, my fancy palette here. And I've got, I've got, these are the colors I'm working with tonight, okay? I've got white and black and the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Maybe you've got orange and green and purple at your disposal, that's awesome. I'll be just using the primaries today to mix those, so. If you only have the primary colors, we're gonna, we're gonna make our colors work for us here with um, blending and mixing purples and oranges and whatnot. All right, so I've got my canvas at the ready. I'm gonna be using um, my two trusty brushes that I usually work with. One is a larger flat brush, the other is a smaller flat brush, and it's flat meaning that the crimp is flat. If you have a round brush where the, the crimp is round, that, that's fine too. But I like working with these guys. I've got my cup of water ready mm -hmm. so I can wash and rinse in between if I need to. And as always, I have a supply of paper towel for when I'm wiping off any excess paint uh, before I rinse my brush. So that that is all I need and I think I'm going to let her rip, so to speak, and we can get started here. All right, so um, basically to make my life easier, I'm gonna plan out where this, the edge of this pumpkin is gonna be, okay? And that's just gonna help me kind of lay all these shapes out. And we're gonna actually work on our background first for this glowy moon or whatever it is in our background sky. But I do want to just make my life easy by kind of lining out where this pumpkin is going to be. And you can see maybe that it's, it's taken up pretty much half, half of our, our canvas here. So I'm going to start by using my little brush. I'm going to dip into some yellow. And I'm just going to sketch out this outline of that pumpkin just to like tell myself where this pumpkin is going to live. Um, I'm just taking that small brush and I'm just kind of sketching out for myself where this pumpkin, oh, I went a little big there. So as I'm sketching out my pumpkin, I might have gone up too far and I think, oof, that's too big. And that's fine. At this point, we can kind of play around and make mistakes. So I'm just gonna remind myself, I actually wanna go lower. So don't worry about making this part kind of sketchy 
It's not perfect at this point. We're just kind of planning things out, playing around. And here's the time when we can kind of like make a line and go, oh, nope, that's not what I wanted. So I'm just going to lower my, my pumpkin down here a bit. And that's just to tell myself where that's going to be in the future. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just wipe off that little brush because I'm going to I'm going to leave that little brush alone for the moment. I always like wiping off the excess paint and then giving my brush a nice bath in my cup of water. If you wipe off the excess paint before you um, dip it in the water, it's going to help save the life of your brush and, and the life of the water. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put that small brush aside. And now that I've gotten the two sections of my painting, laid out, we're going to work on this, the glow of this moon, okay, in the back. And we're going to start that by taking, I've got my bigger brush now, and I'm going to grab some white paint. And I'm going to start working a round shape right above my pumpkin line. And I want, I don't want to be too, too conservative with that white paint because I do want to blend some other colors. So I don't want that white paint to dry. But basically what I'm doing is putting a big old blob of white paint right above my pumpkin line. And the question you might be asking is, well, how big, how big should this be? Okay, I'm pretty much going from the edge of that pumpkin to the edge of the canvas at the tippity top. And I'm going to do my best to um, take things slow. I have a tendency to, to rush through things. Um, and if I, if I am going fast, please, please type in the chat um, and, I'll, and I'll try to slow down. If you're just joining us, if you got in a little late so far, all we've done is in yellow, we've outlined our pumpkin. And then we've gotten some white paint and we're just putting a big old blob, that's a technical term, big old blob from the top of that pumpkin line to the top of the canvas. We're, we're prepping that area for our, for our moon, our moon blending that's going to happen. All right, so the next step, um, if you're like me, you've got a big old glop of white paint on your brush, okay? I'm just gonna wipe that off on my paper plate. Okay, I'm not gonna need all that. I don't need to wash my brush, meaning I don't need to rinse it off with water, but I do wanna get kind of as much of that excess white off my brush, but it doesn't have to be clean, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this yellow glow Okay, so I've got that same brush. Okay, it's still got some of that white pigment on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it into my yellow paint. Okay, just a little bit right on the corner. And then I'm going to start finding this moon shape. Okay, and this moon is smaller than the white blob that we just did. Okay. So I might just, I'm going to probably start on the tip of my pumpkin line and then kind of just basically draw this moon shape. And I'm starting it out like that because I want to make sure that the center of my moon is white and bright. And as I go out, it, it gets more yellow. 
So again, all I did was I had the corner of my brush, dipped that in yellow, and then I kind of drew this halo right above my pumpkin, okay? And as you can see, the halo is kind of sitting behind, behind that pumpkin, right? So it kind of cuts off the bottom of the moon here. And again, I leave that, I leave this circle open in the middle with some of that white paint showing because I want to be able to blend inwards and keep the center of that moon white and bright. So I started moving my brush strokes inward. So I get this gradient of bright white in the middle and working my way out to more yellow. And as I work out, I can even add more yellow. I can go back and grab, grab some of that yellow paint. And now I'm gonna focus it really on the outer edge. And I can even just keep moving outward Okay, now in your little painting, maybe your moon is smaller than this or bigger. Um, that's totally up to you, right? It doesn't have to be exactly like this sketch here. In fact, the painting that I'm gonna do is certainly not gonna be exactly like my sketch, okay? Um, again, the idea here is that I want in my painting to have a bright glowy middle working out to a more yellow outer ring. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And for our next trick, we're going to work on the, the outer edges of this, of this sky. Okay, so we, we changed from a bright white yellow to a dark purpley blue, um, even with a little black. So because of this major change in color, I am going to wipe off the excess paint from my brush, get off all those glops. All right, and then I can give my brush a good clean rinse in my cup of water. Dry that off on my paper towel. And I want to get that as dry as I can. I don't have to go crazy, but I don't, I don't really want water to mix in with my paint at this point. All right. So again, I want to start um, in the corners and start building up this, this dark color. Um, so for me, I'm gonna start with um, a purple. So if you have purple paint, you can start with your just straight purple paint. If you're like me and you only have red and blue, then I'm gonna mix some red and blue right in my plate. So I just kinda um, I've set up my blue and red next to each other so I can kind of just double dip at the same time. Got red and blue on my brush. I can smudge them around in my plate. Again, technical term, smudging right in my plate for this purpley dark color. It's whatever kind of color you want really. All right, I think I like that. I'll probably have to make more of that as I go. Um, but I'm just going to now start in the corners and gently go inwards and maybe pick up some of that yellow 
and gently blend in, okay? So that's, that's one way to do it. You can have a really kind of smooth, gentle stroke where you really blend and get a soft, soft blend, meaning I'm very, very gently going up and down here along that circular shape we did. And if you're patient, <laughs> you can just kind of go in and out towards the center and back out. If you're real patient, you can get a nice soft blend like that. If you want more of like a sketchy kind of fun um, look that has a bit more energy, you can, you know, just use a, a quicker brush stroke and maybe you have like um, short kind of wispy sketchy strokes like that, okay? That's totally up to you, right? Um, I, I like both of those things, depending on, you know, what kind of painting I'm doing. Um, so it's up to you. A nice, soft, blendy thing would be really um, glowing, like it would help that, that yellow center glow. Um, or if you want kind of a, this, the original sketch kind of has more energy and more sketchiness to it, it's totally up to you. So I, I don't know, maybe I'll do a soft blendy and then I might add some sketchy lines later. So um, that's what I've got for uh, purple. And I might go back and add in some darker corners. But for now, I'm just going to continue to build up my purple color in my plate. And again, I start from the outside corner. You can see that had more red in it. Let me grab some blue, start from that outside corner and work your way in. I have to, oh, I grabbed some white from the top of my canvas inadvertently. It's a happy surprise or a happy accident. I'm sorry, Bob Ross would say a happy accident. All right. So um, it happens all the time in painting. You um, accidentally grab some paint that you, you didn't plan to have. So I just wipe that off, no problem. And I just keep working. And I'm working, uh, uh, by the way, if I didn't mention, I'm just working right to that pumpkin line that we did. That was the very first thing that we put down. I'm going right down to that guideline. So hopefully you can kind of see if you're patient and really getting that soft blend, it really starts to look like it's glowing, which is kind of neat. And then I get carried away and I can't help but keep going towards the center. All right, so I, I want to add a little bit of darkness. Um, oh, I think I just saw a question. Uh, yes, so if your white paint dried on you, this is a great question because I'm sure it's happened to uh, more than one of you. If your white paint dried on you and you're not getting that glowy, with this painting, you can absolutely, totally clean your brush, get a fresh brush, clean brush and go back and grab some of that white and hit up that center again and work your way out. Um, so this is, this is kind of a really forgiving point of the painting. Like if your paint, your white paint is dry and it's like, ah, that's not blending anything. Um, 
you can absolutely go back in and hit up that center with some white and kind of repeat the process, go back and grab some yellow. So you can totally bring back, bring back the blend by adding some more wet white paint. So for example, like mine, mine is kind of dry right now. So what I can do um, with a fresh brush, I can just go in and grab some more white and I can just go back in again. Like, let's say I didn't want it to be that small. Like I can totally just go back in again. I'm using my small brush, this might take a while. Go back in again and start swirling outwards to get my blend um, going again. Okay. And then I can go back, grab some yellow while sticking my finger in blue paint. That's totally cool. Um, grab some yellow and I can just go back out and kind of repeat the steps. So yes, um, thanks for asking that question. I didn't see your name, um, but that's a great question that happens that comes up all the time. That happens to me when I'm painting, I'm trying to blend and then it's like, Ugh, let it dry. That's what happens with acrylics. So, which is what I'm working with, the cheapest possible version of acrylic that is available at Michael's, this kind. <laughs> so it dries pretty quickly. But yes, we can always just kind of go back in and get our blend going on again. All right, so I'm back to my purple brush, just kind of getting that blend happening. So, um, right, looking back at the original, I kind of like how these corners get really dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully with that brush still with the um, purple pigment in it that I've been working with. I'm going to grab a smidgy smoosh of black, smidgy smooch, technical term, really tiny, okay, barely there. Um, I can always add more black. It's harder to take it away, okay? So I often say, take, take a little amount of a black, little, a little bit of black, and if you think you have enough or just the right amount, take, take away some even more. Um, because it happens all the time where students, they go in hot <laughs> with their black paint and they're like, ooh. <laughs> so I've got that little itty bitty bit and I'm gonna go into my corner again and again, work that blending, all right? I can see it in, the, in my canvas, but if I look at the video, it's hard to pick up. So I'm gonna add some more. There we go. And I get that nice darkened corner in there. Jackie, we did have a request um, just to slow down just a little bit. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely, I can slow down. So um, what I'll do is also kind of do a recap just in case anybody's just joining us or is stuck. Right, we started out with our pumpkin line, then we put on a big old blob of white, and then we outlined that white with some yellow to start getting that glow happening. And then we switched gears, we washed our brush and worked um, on making a purple paint. If we don't have it, we have red and blue, or we do have straight purple, okay? And we started from the corners and worked our way towards our glowing yellow. And again, we started in all the corners. Uh, the question is, how did you get your purple to cover so well? So this might be a question of, um, the paint you're using, I know that um, some, some straight purples um, have a different kind of consistency to it and you might have to work it um, harder. I know that um, the artist's loft version of purple um, is kind of hard to work with. If, if you're talking about coverage, meaning you see like um, the texture of the canvas coming through, uh, or it's kind of see-through, if that's what you're talking about, coverage, you just might need to add more pigment to your brush as you're moving it around. 
Um, if you ask uh, something more specific, I might be able to address it. But um, so if you're having trouble with coverage, it just might be the amount of paint you have on the brush. Um, but I, 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 it's funny you mentioned purple because I know that in there's um, this brand and this brand from Michael's Artist Loft. Um, yeah, yeah, it could be the amount. For some reason, purple doesn't, doesn't cover well. But yeah, so if you're working on your canvas and you're like, gee, I, I see all my, my paintbrush marks and the bristle marks and I don't like that, it's probably um, the amount of paint on your brush um, and for, you know, better or worse, or that's not the right expression, but in any case, it could also be the quality of paint. Um, like I work with like very, these are just like the cheapest you can get and um, they're very watery, <laughs> so they they do not they do not cover um, a whole lot. All right, I just got a message that my internet is unstable, so I hope I hope I'm still with you guys. Can I have a thumbs up if if everything seems okay on your end? Okay, all right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, I don't feel good when I see that message. All right, so hopefully hopefully I've yabbed and yammered on enough. Um, so after I did my purple, I did go into some black to hit up this corner. And I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm hoping that I'm not terribly dry. So my canvas is pretty dry right now. So I'm going to see what happens when I add my black. I might expect that it's going to go on pretty, pretty harsh, but I can kind of smush that paint in there. <laughs> Another technical term. In the case that you can hear my cat, what she's saying is she's starving me and I need food. Um, I'm going back um, to the my corners on the right side again with that black paint. And um, so what's happened to me is um, my purple is dry. So what I can do here to get the blendy look, even though it's dry, is I can use um, a very, very light pressure with that black paint on my brush. And it's gonna kind of look like, it's kind of like charcoal -y, And that's gonna help get my blend going. Now, what I don't recommend is that you add water um, because you risk just stripping the paint right off the canvas. Okay. Some of you might have already discovered that and that's fine. <laughs> um, but what else, the other thing I can do is if I'm in a dry situation is I can just go back to my paint, mix up some more purple and just kind of start again, get that purple going. and go back in with some black. Just a wee bit, smidgy smooch. All right, so that's kind of a, a really smooth blending. Um, but what I want to do now is because I kind of like it and I want to show you um, in the original sketch, um, I get kind of like, you know, basically it's like the, the Van Gogh starry night kind of effect with these, these streaks. Okay, so I'm going to take this time to wipe off the excess paint from my brush and give it a rinse. So yeah, I'm washing that brush because I want to use that same brush to get some of these streaks because I think it looks kind of cool. 
And you don't have to do this part if you if you did a blendy, uh, super smooth kind of background and you want to leave it, that's totally fine. All right, so I've got a nice, clean, dry brush. And what I want to do is get these kind of streaky light yellow things happening here. So what I'm going to do is go into my paint and I'm going to double dip in yellow and white, smudge that around in my plate. I basically want a really, really bright yellow, really, excuse me, very light yellow, right? Something like that. Okay, and I don't, I don't need a lot of pigment on the brush, okay? It's safer, in fact, to just have very little. So that's, that's what I'm working with. Not a whole lot on the brush, okay? And then the name of the game here is a very gentle stroke, very gentle pressure. And again, I'm just kind of doing these little wispy streaks. And it's going to happen, I'm going to try to slow it down, but I tend to do it pretty quickly before I start thinking too much. That's why I move fast. I don't want to think too much. Um, so I've got the tips of the, the bristles, right, uh, perpendicular to, to the canvas here. I'm just going to kind of swirl on these little shiny lines. And these are gonna, you know, come out on the dark parts more than anything. The darker parts of our background. Well, that's kind of what got going on. And those are kind of short strokes. Maybe you want longer strokes, that's fine, like this. You can kind of, yeah, you can kind of go inward to see if it shows up on the yellow. Something like that. So again, that's a really, really light stroke and that's very, very little paint on the brush. And if you, you've made that decision to do those little streaks and you hate them, <laughs> um, the good news is it's such a light color, you could, you could paint over them in purple easily, okay? Um, oh, but I will mention in case um, this is anybody's first time doing one of these paints is I promise you tomorrow you will like your painting a hundred times more. Because um, right now you're in it, you're seeing everything that you think is wrong with it. Um, but tomorrow when you wake up in the morning and you see it, I promise you're gonna be like, oh, hey, that's not so bad. That looks like a cat. <laughs> All right. So don't, don't be hard on yourself right now in the process. I promise when it's all, when it's all done, it'll be all good. So I'm gonna take a little pause there. Um, in case that was too fast and to let people kind of catch up. So I see we've got over 200 participants tonight. That is so awesome. So this is definitely um, a record for me. <laughs> um, I do regular event, well, of course, with the pandemic that was put on hold, but I do regular uh, paint events at the Arena Bar and Grill here in town in State College. And the largest crowd I had was, I think, 123. So this <laughs> is definitely my record. Um, we're having a, a request to make the page bigger. Um, let's see. 
I believe it's spotlighted. I don't know how to make that bigger. I mean, I can move my camera closer. That's one thing I can do. In the top right corner is um, like an outline. You can click that to make it full screen. Ah, yes. So yes, in the upper right hand corner, you should see a box with four corners. Uh, and another comment is that you might need to choose speaker view. So hopefully that helped. Okie dokie, artichoke. Um, so I'm at a point where I'm done with my sky. So that means I'm going to um, give my brush a good clean rinse before we uh, move on. And um, I can kind of just talk for a minute in case anyone needs to catch up. Um, for our next trick, we're going to uh, outline our paw print, okay? Because I don't, I don't want to color this in with our pumpkin color. I want to let that be white so that uh, blue paw print can go over top nice and clean and clear. So our next step is going to be actually to outline that um, oval for our uh, paw print logo. And we're actually gonna do this in yellow again um, for that. Um, let's see, if you, have, if you have orange, you can outline it in orange. Um, but the safe, yeah, let's just do it in yellow if you have, it's kind of the safest, the safest um, to play around with because uh, yellow, is forgiving. We can go over it with pretty much anything. So yeah, I would I would follow along with me and do this next thing in yellow. Okay. Um, I don't recommend outlining in blue um, because if we make mistakes, we we can make a mess for ourselves. So yellow is the most forgiving to do this this outline. All right. Can everybody give me a thumbs up if we're good? I'm getting another like your network network bandwidth is low. So I just want to make sure that we're st I'm still with you guys. Can you tell us which brush we should do this next step with? Uh, yes. So I'm going to use my little brush. All right, I've got my little brush. I mean, anything that you feel like you can draw a line with, all right? So the name of the game here is go bigger than you think because we can always make it smaller, okay? Making it bigger gets a little tricky because we have yellow and paint in the way. Um, an even safer way to go about this is to do it in white <laughs> so you can really um, make mistakes and it doesn't matter. But I'm going to do mine in yellow so you can actually see it on the screen. All right. And just to remind ourselves, going back to the original, this, this thing is pretty, pretty big um, compared to the pumpkin itself, right? Um, it's almost the size of my moon. So I'm going to be pretty um, liberal with this oval here. Something like that. Try to make it thicker so you can see.
All right. So that's, that's what I've got. That's going to be my paw print. And I can just uh, let that go for the moment. Um, I'm going to return to my bigger brush. So I am going to rinse that smaller one. I always um, try to work with a clean brush, but you definitely don't want to let acrylic sit on a brush um, just out on the counter because that it will dry and it ruins the brush. All right, so um, I'm returning to my uh, big brush here. And what I'm going to do is, uh, it might be a little weird, but <laughs> um, since I don't have orange, I need to make my orange with red and yellow paint. Um, and the technique I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the paint on the canvas, which means I'm going to paint my pumpkin completely yellow first. Okay. Um, so if you have orange, now's the time to just cover your uh, pumpkin in orange. But if you don't have orange and you're like me, you're going to mix orange right on the canvas. And I do this for a number of reasons. It um, helps me absolutely control uh, how much red is going into this orange. So you're not sitting mixing in your plate like for an hour getting it right, right? Um, so it's, it's basically a way to conserve paint as well. So I'm going to use my big brush and I'm going to paint my whole pumpkin yellow. And I'm going right up to the edges of my sky I don't care if they're getting muddy and dirty from my sky color. That is not a problem. I am avoiding the oval where my Penn State logo is going to go. And I'm just covering my pumpkin in yellow. In fact, what I like to do is to scrub anything that is sky to scrub it clean to get those edges clear. And again, since I'm mixing right on the canvas, I can be really generous with that yellow paint. Definitely don't want that to dry. I mean, it's not a tragedy if it does dry, I just put more yellow on it. All right, something else to um, pay attention to is I wanna kind of pull out these ridges on the pumpkin, the edge of the pumpkin. So where these, you know, where those uh, spines happen. So instead of it being a perfectly round smooth edge as it is now, um, what I'm going to do is to start to pop out these um, spines, these bumps. Okay. And let me see, I can, bring that up closer so you can see what I've done. And again, I don't care that they're kind of mixing with the, the sky color right now. That's not a problem, but I am kind of emphasizing these bumps. Maybe that's the way to put it, these, the bumps on the edge of the pumpkin there. And those bumps are going to help and inform me later where, where our lines go, right? So if, if those of you um, out there are technical and you need explicit instruction, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bumps. <laughs> 
You can have as many bumps as you want, but mine has eight. And I can't help myself but start to kind of pull down these ridges. All right, so um, those of you who are catching up, we um, outlined our logo because we want to let that stay white. Then I filled in my pumpkin with yellow because I'm going to mix directly on my canvas my orange color. And I also added these bumps um, on the silhouette of our pumpkin to indicate those classic pumpkin ridges. All right, as I said, we're mixing this orange right on the canvas. So I've got my pumpkin loaded with yellow. So now what I'm gonna do, I don't need to wash my brush. I'm going to uh, tap into some red So tap, tap right on that red. Okay, again, I'm gonna start with a little. A little goes a long way. I can always add more red. Um, it's harder to take it away. And with that red paint on my brush, I'm just gonna start mixing right on the pumpkin, paying attention to where these ridges are. So I'm kind of following those bumps down, right? And what, what I'm trying to do is um, keep, keep the left ridge, the left, excuse me, the left side of the ridge darker, meaning it has more red and I'm blending it more yellow getting towards the center. Okay, I'll repeat that. Um, and I can repeat it eight times, in fact. So the idea here is that our light source, our moon, okay, is lighting up our pumpkin. So it's hitting, um, for these ridges on the left side, it's hitting the ridges on the, on the right. So the right side of each ridge or bump is gonna be lighter than the left. That's getting really technical. If, if you want, you can totally just paint your whole pumpkin solid meaning no, no kind of differentiations in, in the ridges. And that's totally fine too. Jackie, there was a couple um, comments in the chat if you want to look over. Sure, there. sure. Oh, good questions. Uh, ah, okay, so wait. Ah, so great question. Yeah, if you do have the orange and you want to have that same effect with the ridges, go in and, and use red red will give you the same effect. It'll just make it a, a darker a darker orange. Absolutely. Um, if you're feeling really um, uh, bold, you, uh, black would also work, um, but you just use very, very little black to get those, those ridges happening. And in fact, um, later on, I am going to do some more outlining with, with black, um, just to emphasize a bit more. Um, it's actually a black and red mix to make it kind of like a brown burnt color. All right, so um, with my left, my ridges on the left, that light source is hitting things um, here on the right. 
So once I move to my ridges on the other side, um, that switches, right? So now the light source is hitting them on the left. So now my, the right side of my bumps are gonna get darker. And don't, don't worry if um, you're kind of getting messy edges on your uh, logo circle, because our dark blue is going to go over that fairly well. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, so the question is, my bumps on the pumpkin are still purple and blue. How do I get the orange to blend more? Um, so if, you're, if your purple is really popping through that orange, um, what you might need to do is just let that orange dry and then go over top with another uh, layer, okay? Also, uh, your white paint is probably most opaque. So kind of like priming that, letting it dry, priming it with yellow and kind of starting over um, is also a way to get rid of that purple. Let's see. The yellow, red, and sky color is all blending and it's turning gray. So again, um, if it's still wet, I would let it dry and kind of go over top again with a fresh layer of orange or whatever you've got going on. Um, also, if you feel like you're at a point of, I can't fix this, um, just letting it dry and like priming it over with um, white paint, basically putting some you know, corrector tape right over it with that white paint, that could be helpful. But also, if, um, if you've got enough pigment on your brush, sometimes just like scrubbing it with the ends of your bristles, like a scrub brush, can kind of remove anything you don't like if it's, if it's dried. Um, I hope that's helpful, guys. Um, so I don't know if it's, if it's like this is what, whoops, took my thumb and paint. So I don't know if you can see my edges here, like they're not perfectly blended in. I mean, the sky is kind of shining through, but I, I don't mind that. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible. So it, it might not be as bad as you think. That's always a possibility. Um, but uh, if, if I were in person and someone had your question, um, I'd probably say just let it dry and then go over top of it again. Okay. All right, so um, maybe I want to emphasize my ridges more with some of this darker shadowy color. And that is um, basically red with a smidge of black. And black and red um, mix to a really kind of nice burnt kind of color, sometimes even like a wine. So I'm just, I didn't even um, wash my brush. I still got that orange happening. I'm just gonna grab some red. Little smidgy smidge of black. 
and I get this muddy dark color. And I'm gonna use that to um, really emphasize my ridges. Um, and again, I want the, the outer edges that are away from my light source to have this darker color. And this can be kind of sketchy. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended or lined. Oh, someone said, can you repeat what you just said? Oh, I, ooh, ooh, what did I say? <laughs> um, are you asking about the, the lines on the, on the pumpkin maybe? Um, okay, so for that, I just, um, ah, yes, okay. Um, for the outline of the ridges there, all I did was, is I just, I still had my brush that had like the orange that I was working with on. I dipped into some more red and took a smidgy smooch of black and I got like this muddy brown color. And then I um, just pulled that down on my, my outer edges there. So yeah, any, any kind of like dark brown color would do, even just straight black would work but a straight black could come off really harsh. Um, and I'm just kind of streaking those on the edges there. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes at, at this point, when you put those outlines on, it really pops and it's like, oh, yes, I got a pumpkin. All right. So um, I am going to, at this point, uh, wash off any excess paint. And yes, if you are joining, uh, this is going to be recorded. Uh, it is being recorded and uh, will be available, I believe, by the end of the week. So absolutely, you'll be able to catch up um, and view it later. All right, so um, I was saying I'm going to uh, wipe off any excess paint from my brush and give it a nice, good, clean rinse. All right, again, I'm just rinsing my big brush clean. I want that to be nice and clean because I'm going to put on my first coat of blue for the Penn State logo. All right, so if you have a uh, paint that is similar to mine, you have a really bright blue um, and it's not quite um, Penn State blue. Um, so <laughs> the bottle that I have is literally called blue. <laughs> so it's not anything special. It's a very bright um, blue. It's definitely not Penn State blue. Um, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to use blue with a smidgy, smidgy smooch of black to get a darker, a darker blue that's not so bright. Um, it's up to you what color you want to use, um, uh, how true to the Penn State blue you can get. Um, depends on what kind of paint you have, but if you have my cheap acrylic paint that I've got, um, it's a very, very bright blue. And I'm just going to grab a smidge of black and smudge that in there. Okay. A little goes a long way. And we're actually going to probably end up doing two coats of this. So I want to get this first coat done and out of the way. So it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect for my first coat. And I'm just going to scrub this on. Um, again, this is my first coat, so um, it doesn't have to perfectly match just yet, but I do want to take the time to go over any kind of rough edges from my pumpkin earlier. Right, so that is going to be my first uh, coat for that logo there. And we're going to move on, let that dry a bit before our second coat. Again, I kind of smooth out any kind of rough edges that I need to right there. Yes, I will slow down. I will slow down. So yes, some people are still working on their lines, no problem. Um, I will say that on the video, this blue looks pretty good, but in, in the flesh in person, my blue is still pretty bright. Um, to give you an idea, it's still, it kind of looks like painter's tape. Um, anyway, so that is going to be my first coat. Um, for our next step after the logo, we're going to move on to the cat. Okay. Um, so what that does is while we work on the cat, the first coat of the logo can dry. And then when we're done with the cat, we can do a second coat on the logo. And then we can move on to foliage while the logo is drying, and then we finish off with the white of the paw print. So that's kind of a, a roadmap to what is ahead. So if you are um, with me and you've just painted the blue of your, of your logo, um, you can go ahead and wipe off that paint, give it a good clean rinse. Um, just because I don't like letting paint dry on my brush.
All right. So again, I've just done um, the first coat of the blue on the Penn State logo. I've washed and cleaned that brush because um, we're going to move on to uh, the kitty cat. Yes, pro tip, do not drink your paint water. Ugh, Marianne, I'm so sorry. I usually make that announcement. <laughs> don't, don't drink your paint water and don't put your brush in your wine. Yeah, um, my paint is non-toxic, so I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's an easy mistake. <laughs> yeah, um, actually more than that is I tend to uh, stick brushes in my mouth a lot while I'm like transferring brushes and I've definitely like had a glop of paint on the end of the brush and mm -hmm, that was not pleasant. Non-toxic but also not pleasant. All right, so speaking of pumpkins, I have not carved my jack-o'-lantern yet. I feel like I should probably get on that. <laughs> I see some people have carved theirs already on social media anyway. All right, I am keeping an eye, an eye on the time and I don't remember how much time we have um, blocked out for this, but um, I'm gonna move, move along um, in the case that we need to wrap up by 8.30. Uh, yes, I thought so, okay. Um, so um, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna move on to my little brush. Um, it's really whatever you feel good about working on your kitty with, okay? Um, so I'm going to start with my kitty's head because I want to dictate where, where that cat goes. I want to keep his head kind of as a halo um, in, front of the, in front of the moon. I don't want to start with his body and inadvertently <laughs> give him no space for his poor head. So I'm gonna start with his head because I can control exactly where I want it to go. I'm moving again, I'm moving to my smaller brush and I'm going to paint his head, which is essentially a little smushed circle, okay? Um, so it's not a perfect circle. I'm just gonna put it right here. And I think I want him to be bigger than that. So you can have your kitty, you know, whatever size you want, but again, start with the head because you can control where exactly that goes. I like kind of keeping him um, surrounded by that halo of the moon. So something like that for the kitty head. And then of course, two triangles for ears. And then I can give him his shoulders and body. And I just basically pull down two lines from the bottom of his face down into the pumpkin. And then I just carefully outline those humps that we did earlier.
we got a little kitty cat and her pumpkin. I will never give up the opportunity to paint a cat, especially when it's a nice, easy silhouette black cat. All right. So if you're looking at your cat and he's looking kind of weird, um, something that often happens is um, people put the uh, cat head and body together like a circle on top of another circle. Uh, make sure you kind of set, set his head in the shoulders, right? It's not like two balls balancing on, on one another. Um, so set, set that head down into the shoulders. Um, that's something that, that tends to happen. Um, if your cat looks like an owl, that might mean that your ears are too thin or far apart. That's something that can happen. Um, but again, this is with a black silhouette. Um, it's pretty forgiving. You can kind of fix things um, pretty easily because uh, we're just dealing with a silhouette. Um, so I also want to add a uh, little tail. I kind of like that, have his tail kind of curling up over here. So I'm going to start um, at the top of the pumpkin and just give a little curly tail. And I apologize if um, I'm moving quickly but I'm just looking at our time and we, I think we just have the 15 minutes slotted. So so kind of recap my cat really quickly. I started with the um, kind of smushed circle for the head, not a perfect circle. I added triangles for the ears. I set that head down into his shoulders and body, okay? Added a little tail coming out over here. And then of course, some whiskers. Here's where an angled brush um, comes in handy because I can move, move the brush back and forth to try to get an edge. And I hold that brush perpendicular to the canvas and pull out some whiskers. If you do not have a, an angled brush or a flat brush, you have a round brush, you're gonna use your brush like a pen or a pencil with a very, very light touch, barely, barely touching the canvas. And um, in the original sketch, I added some little hairs coming out of his ears just because my cat has those. <laughs> so I add them. And fun fact, the hair that grows out of a, a cat's ears is called furnishings. I tell that to as many people as possible because I love it. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some ear furnishings to my painting. All right. All right. I'm all done with my cat. You might not be um, done with your cat yet. That's totally fine. I am going to move on. Um, so once you're done with your cat, the next step would be um, a second coat on your Penn State color. Which we might might not have to do. So if you're if you're like rushing, um, something that you might be able to skip is the second coat of blue on um, the Penn State logo. But I'm going to do that um, anyway. Um, I'm just going to give that a second coat. I'm going to try to get it a little bit darker, more true to the Penn State blue.
All righty. Got my second coat on my Penn State blue. It looks much better. Um, it's coming off really dark in the video, I see. But in person, it looks a little bit more true, true to Penn State blue. OK. So again, um, I did my cat. If you're still working on that, what I did after my kitty cat was my second coat of blue on the Penn State logo paw print. What I'm going to do next is um, mix up some green for some um, foliage. You do not have to include this, by the way. Um, I have some like curly Q vines and a leaf, um, but it's really not necessary if you don't want it. Um, but I can do that to kind of uh, have other folks catch up. And so again, I'm using my little brush, gonna mix up some green. I apologize for blazing through this, but I do wanna make sure that we have time for the paw print. Cause I know some people might be nervous with that. So mixing up some green, cause I don't have green of my own. So blue and yellow. And I can add, whoops, add some curly Q vines. Well, that's kind of fun. Maybe a little vine over here. Maybe a little leaf. I'm trying to darken up these vines here so you can see them. Something like that. Again, you don't have to add the, the leaves or the vines. Um, but what I am going to do, because I can't help it, is I'm going to add some shine and reflection on there because that moon would definitely be lighting them up. Oh, I probably should have mentioned this, although I'm sure you all know this, but um, yeah, you can put anything on your on your pump in here, right? Make your own little jack-o'-lantern face. Totally up to you. All right, to recap, after my kitty cat, I put another coat of that blue on top of the logo. Um, I mixed a green and I added some curly Q vines, a little leaf where I wanted it. And I also mixed up a highlight color 
which was basically a really, really light green, almost yellow. And I kind of touched up some of the areas on the vines and leaves where it might get that highlight from the moonlight. And again, because I can't help it, I'm probably going to add some highlight to my kitty because I just like adding highlight to everything. <laughs> so I'm just kind of, if you want, you can kind of touch up just the, just the edges of this little kitty. Cool. All right. At this point, I'm ready for the paw print. Now, it might be helpful if you have a device to look up um, the Penn State paw print um, as your guide, because that will be a better guide um, than my, my painting. Um, just to get the, you know, proportions right. <clears throat> so at this point, um, my logo might not be um, bone dry with the blue paint and that's fine. Um, what I'm gonna do is probably go over that paw print in, um, <laughs> Uh, you make a good point. As a Penn Stater, the paw print is embedded in memory. Um, yes. Uh, the color I highlight with is um, yellow and white mixed together. Yeah, or even white can highlight. Um, so uh, yeah, you guys are probably better at the paw print than I am. Um, I am not a Penn State alum, so I did not have uh, years of, of drawing it over and over again, as I'm sure I would have had I gone to Penn State. Um, okay, so we've got four, four toes, <laughs> four little toe pads and a, and a paw pad. And I'm gonna start with the, 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 large, the large part here, um, making sure, making sure that I leave room for those toes, right? So here I go. I'm going to start from the bottom, giving myself that distance from the bottom that I want. Okay, and I can just start with start with a, a line just to get myself rolling. Take a deep breath. You got this. If you have an adult beverage and you're of age, go for it. Although we should be of age if we're alumni, right? Um, and that's going to be my guide. I'm just going to Carefully draw um, and don't worry about the, the white paint not being perfectly opaque at this point. I am totally blending in with my blue. I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna go over this with another coat, okay? <clears throat> All right, so future alum not, might not be of age, so no adult beverage for you, um, but if you, Need to just take a take a breath. You got this. What's great about this is if you don't like what you've done in white, the blue goes over top of it, no problem, right? Okay. So you can even see mine is a little little smoochy, little smudgy, and I can always just go over that. Okay. And mustn't forget the little swoosh up in here. Again, I'm blending with the blue. I'm not worrying because I'm going to go over that again. And then I can add my little toes. Little toes here. Just kind of, I kind of plan out ahead, like where, the, where they're going to be, making sure my, my toes are centered. I'll probably start with the second one. Mm 
No pressure, right? I'm just painting in front of 200 Penn State alums, that's all. Okay. Again, better to use an actual logo as your guide as opposed to my painting. Fun. And I'm just gonna go over. The best way to go over your um, first lines is when it's completely dry, um, which we might not have the time for. So I'm going to um, let mine go here um, so I can pay attention if there are any questions here. So it is 829 in State College, so we should be wrapping up here. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so happy that we were able to give you some serenity today. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm happy to stick around if you have any questions. I know that a lot of you probably are still working. Um, I realized that we moved really, really quickly um, through this. So I apologize that we didn't kind of block out more time. Um, I thank you guys so much for being here. I, I so enjoy doing this. It was my pleasure. And um, I love that we're just kind of hanging out. Uh, I can peek into your, your dining rooms and your living rooms. <laughs> so it was a pleasure. I hope you're proud of your kitty pumpkins. Um, and you hang them up every year for Halloween. So um, yes, I think Carly wants to get as many folks as possible to hold up um, your paintings and we can get um, kind of a, a screenshot. Um, I, Carly, I don't know if you wanna kind of direct that, um, no, but- No, one no real direction there. Just, you know, fun to see everyone's finished paintings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So can can we for the moment um, go to gallery view? Will I will will that ruin it for everyone if I go to gallery view? Let's see. Did I take away the spotlight? Oh, I love it. Sorry. <laughs> I love seeing everybody's painting. It's seriously my most favorite part of doing this. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's so many pages of you. Oh, you guys rock. Oh, you guys totally rock. I miss doing this in person because I don't get to see everybody's artwork. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so, you guys killed it. Awesome. Oh, I see puppies. I see all sorts of things. Oh, I love it. Oh, you guys did such great work. Oh, awesome. I love all the different things I'm seeing. Oh, I love them. They look so good. Rock on, everyone. Compliments. Oh, my gosh. Thank you oh, for leading so us through this. <laughs> you did it. Oh my goodness. Um, for though, if I could just kind of uh, do some shameless self-promotion, if you guys are in town, if you're in State College and you're needing something to do on um, Halloween, I will be doing a, a paint at the Arena Bar and Grill at 3 p.m. Um, let me try to go to the high, where's, where's the painting? Uh, Carly, can you highlight the, the painting again? Yep, let me just refind it on my screen. Yeah, I can't find it either. That's probably, let's see. Hmm. 
Ah, so shameless self-promotion. If um, you're wanting something to do at uh, Halloween on Saturday, I'm gonna be doing this painting at the arena um, at 3 p.m. in State College, the Arena Bar and Grill. And then um, we're gonna have a trunk or treat in the parking lot um, afterwards. So three o'clock. Yes, kid, this is a, a kid, a kid-friendly, family-friendly event. Yeah. Jackie, it's at the arena or it's virtual? I'm sorry. Oh, good question. It is at the arena. Okay. Um, they've, been, they've been managing like at reduced capacity. Yep. So you're working at like your own table um, with plenty of distance. Um, and really they have one of your events because they're usually packed there. So yeah. Um, uh, this is kind of a last minute thing. So, um, I, I don't think too many people know about it even yet, but, um, yeah. So if, if you want, um, 